Ready, set, go. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, stop. If you want to see how healthy the stream is, you look at who lives there all the time. So we look for diversity and we look for the types of organisms that live there. Today we're going to learn about a watershed organization that was created to provide our community with a set of tools and programs designed to help clean and protect the Rivanna River and its tributaries. Join us today as we visit the Rivanna Conservation Alliance. Come on. There we go. Flathead. Well, RCA works to protect and preserve the Rivanna River and its tributaries through a variety of activities, including a community engagement, through education and river sojourns and some restoration projects and also through our water monitoring uh, work. First we had the Rivanna Conservation Society for uh, at least 25 years and there was also Streamwatch, two different yes. groups that came together in 2006 and merged to form this one organization. Talk about the benefits of the two working together now. Well the two working together they were really coming at the, the uh, goal of preserving the Rivanna through different approaches. Okay. Uh, Ravana Conservation Society had a lot of the community engagement and the restoration projects while Streamwatch was focused on the water monitoring. Bringing them together really leveraged the volunteer efforts of both. And so volunteers in our community do this. Yes. They conduct the monitoring. They're trained. Talk about yes. that. Talk about the importance of people getting coming and volunteering and be a, being a part of this. So RCA has two staff scientists, one who manages the bacterial monitoring side, one that manages the benthic monitoring side. Part of their work is to train volunteers and to make sure we have a, a critical number, a necessary number of certified volunteers to work at this level of monitoring and to oversee all the processes. Uh, without the volunteers, we would never be able to get out to the number of sites that we monitor. Right. Uh, and it makes the Ravana watershed the most monitored watershed in the entire state of Virginia. And that's from DEQ. That is exciting. Yes. Okay, you also have river that. stewards. What do they do? So our, we also have uh, river stewards as part of our staff, and they also work in the education uh, side of our work. And they paddle different stretches of the Ravana and some of the tributaries and reservoirs on a regular basis and report on what they find. What are uh, they looking for? They are, we, we describe this as our physical monitoring. Okay. So they're looking for changes to the river, uh, which is particularly important after we've had some high water or flooding. Trees, obstacles can get washed in, debris can show up. They're the eyes on the river for the yeah. community. And the volunteer organizations from around the area, from UVA's APO to the Nature Conservancy's volunteer uh, list and Master Naturalists. Master Naturalists come out and help a lot with education and they'll also be part of our stream monitors. We're all working hand in glove to really reach our goals of a river that's as great as it can be. Uh, a lot of people don't realize there's actually 40 plus miles to the Ravana River. For us, it's a matter of getting out there, talking to people. We clean up as we go. Um, so we always have our trash bags and pick up smaller trash as well as larger objects. In the recent past, we've also removed a giant 20-foot trailer from the river. But generally, for the most part, we're documenting good things. So we'll start out with a one-second net down yeah. here. My background's geology with uh, an emphasis on chemistry and physics, not biology. I never thought I'd be looking at insect larvae in a stream. There can be anywhere from just a couple to over 200 in a, a vial. Those that are sensitive to pollution, meaning they cannot tolerate much pollution at all. At the other end of the spectrum, there are those that can tolerate pollution. And then there's a bunch in the middle. You want them all present in the healthiest streams. Based on the type of bugs that we saw today, we saw some mayflies, but we saw net spinners and crane flies, um, some riffle beetle larva, a uh, riffle beetle, and so that would probably put it into a fair category um, based on the diversity that we did see in today's collection. So the macrobenthic invertebrate monitoring, which looks at the uh, aquatic larva in the stream beds, is a long-term monitoring goal, so twice a year. Groups go out to stream sites throughout the watershed and they analyze both the number and variety of macroinvertebrates that are present. And that gives us a good uh, indicator of the overall stream health because these are organisms that are very susceptible to any kind of interference or intrusion. So right. it's a good measure of any kind of human impact on what's happening. How many sites do you do that? We monitor 50 sites That's what I thought. That's across wow. the watershed with us. Wow. And those spread out more 
well beyond the urban rings and the built up areas uh, all the way from the the tributaries that are high up in the national park all the way down through Fublena County. And, and then the other monitoring is? The bacterial work is done primarily through the summer and through the warmer months and we monitor uh, 14 sites throughout the urban ring of Charlottesville and down through Fluvanna County for bacteria levels uh, in the water. Right. Uh, we have a number of reference streams that are very much in an undisturbed state and are in very good health. Uh, some others that get a lot of pressure uh, might be near uh, areas where uh, st stream banks are eroded or have uh, shallower and, and warmer spots uh, aren't Development, well. so runoff is an issue. Runoff can be an issue and that can disturb the river and its tributaries. Flooding can be an issue. Flooding can be a big issue. Keeping livestock out of the streams. Yes. So I collected two samples today. One was for turbidity, so that will basically be a measure of the particulates that's in the water, and so that analysis will happen back in the lab. And then the second sample I collected was for bacteria, and we will find out how much E. coli is in the water, and then we'll m compare that to what is a safe level uh, for the stream, and then we publish that for the public to know. So the Virginia Department of Environmental Quality sets the recreational standard at 235 colony forming units, or CFUs. So when E. coli is present in these cells, the cell will fluoresce, so it looks blue under UV light. And so then we count the number of cells that are fluorescing and we get an MPN most probable number. So if we see numbers under 235, that's a good reading. Say a stream or a river gets sort of a negative report, then what do you do? How do you, how do you go into motion to, to fix this? Well, we share all of our water monitoring results with our local partners, the city of Charlottesville, the counties of Albemarle Green and Fluvanna, the University of Virginia, Ravana Water and Sewer Authority, and we've been able to identify a number of times where there were uh, leaks in sewer systems uh, right. well oh, before right. they would have been apparent from other methods, uh, right. and we're actually able to help locate those through a series of uh, monitoring uh, sites to try to narrow down where the uh, contamination was coming from. And these partners all want the Ravana to be as healthy as we do. And what's really exciting is that RCA is certified. So the results that you get are the results that the governments rely upon. You, it, they don't have to go through any other certification, that's, correct? That's right. There's different levels of certi certification. The highest level is level three. And this is from the? From the Virginia Department of Environmental Quality, right. the EQ. And the level three certification means that our data is as reliable as if DEQ or EPA or any other uh, governing group had collected it themselves. And then education and outreach, that's a big deal for you. So we, we have uh, education outreach on formal and less formal levels. Uh, we have the Shire Natural Area out in Fluvanna County, a 100 acre uh, farm that includes some ponds and we have uh, workshops out there that anyone in the community can, can sign up with. But we also partner with local middle schools and elementary schools for watershed education to bring some resources into the classroom frequently on their own school properties where streams are nearby oh, uh, for the students to get an idea of what it means to uh, really take care of water resources and what kind of science and monitoring take place uh, to track the, the quality of the water. People don't realize but you can see bald eagles, you know, great blue herons, osprey, uh, river otters, beavers, you know, the deer come down and feed. Um, so there's a lot of really cool wildlife, you know, that's supported by the river and the creeks and streams that, that you see as well that unless you get out there you don't even know exists as well. So that's a really good indicator. We get to sit out in this lovely setting for a couple of hours. We get to be away from all our electronics. We can chat with each other and learn from each other. And it's just a really nice couple of hours that we can spend out in nature and, and do some good citizen science and enjoy ourselves. Well, I'm really invested in the local waterways here. I use them recreationally myself. I love to paddle and go out with my family on the watershed. And so having clean water that the community can use and enjoy and also for the natural community is very important to me. That, that's another one of your goals is recreation, supporting recreation on the river. Mm -hmm. And so you all are involved in a lot of events throughout the year where you do that. Yes. Our river stewards on, a, on their floats 
Uh, they will engage with other paddlers on the river, uh, sometimes give people advice and guidance uh, and, and invite other folks to come along on their paddle. So that's kind of some of the small ways. Uh, get the uh, Boys and Girls Club, YMCA groups out onto the river. And we'll also uh, be hosting the Ravana Regatta, which is a kayak race uh, that's been going on for quite a while. And we're thrilled to be hosting that. How do we take care of our rivers? What do we tell people today? What are the best ways that we can all work to take care of the river and the streams? Well, one of the things that's good to keep in mind is that anything that goes in the river could potentially come out of your tap. So anytime you visit the river, make sure you take out any trash that you might have with you. When you're out in a park or a natural area, make sure you're picking up after your pets. If you have a stream on your property, uh, make sure you've got a good healthy buffer of plants between uh, the stream side, the stream banks, and any fields or forests, because that really helps you know, absorb excess nutrients and capture things that we don't want getting into the water. So what are the big future goals for the organization? Well, ultimately, uh, because RCA is unique, we're the only watershed organization that is certified to level three, both for bacterial and benthic monitoring, soon to include chemical monitoring we want to be able to reach out to other watershed organizations with our playbook. And you take a, a watershed that's a, about the size of the Ravana, uh, this can be replicated. And keep that same level of right here, this is ours commitment, while also increasing the quality of the science that's being done and elevating the community engagement and the recreation that's going on. If we weren't out there monitoring, those issues might go unaddressed for a really long time. So we're able to be out there with a the frequency that we can address things immediately, but then also have this really high quality data to support our findings and to inform decision making that happens in the watershed as well. You know, we all live downstream and it's important uh, that we keep it clean because it costs a lot of money to clean it up. Most of the feedback we get from people is that the Ravana is pretty clean compared to a lot of other places. Some of that due to us, but also just the community taking care of the river and things. <laughs>